So one of the hallmarks of growing up in Canarsie for me was the fact that you could walk everywhere. And some of my earliest memories, in fact, my, my absolute earliest memory of school was walking to Temple Emanuel Preschool with my mom. It was around the corner from us, pretty much around the corner from us. And then after that, um, it became a place you would walk to Avenue L, you'd go to Kenny's, uh, sometimes get accused of shoplifting even if you weren't. Uh, I believe there was another call, store called John's. There was a store John's called Bargain Mart. John's Bargain Mart. Mar Maybe that's the one. Reds. We, Red, I was Reds. just going to say Reds. Reds and Star Valley City. And Star Valley City on Rockaway Parkway. But I think it was actually, come to think of it, it was, it was uh, John's where they would always think you were stealing stuff. But um, we would go to, right here to Original Pizza. we get a slice in the summer. you get a soda, a slice. And you would get chocolate ices. That's what I remember. Um, and I would come here with a friend of mine from 99th Street. And we would also walk to school. We never needed a car. My mother didn't drive. We only had one car that my dad drove to work. But um, it wasn't necessary. And it was really that much of a small town atmosphere. I walked to my grandparents on, um, well, Friday nights. I went to my grandmother's house with my parents for dinner every Friday night. She made a, you know, like a Friday night Sabbath dinner, although she wasn't religious. And then every Saturday, my grandfather would come and walk from Remsen Avenue from their home to 99th Street, pick us up, and take us to a Saturday afternoon matinee at the Sea View, at the, excuse me, at the Canarsie Theater, which was on Avenue L, right near Original Pizza, before this even existed. And we would go next door, buy candy, sneak it into the movie theater. And you would see, like, some. I remember seeing the Ten Commandments in that theater. Charlton Heston, as big as day, as big as whatever, you know, 10 feet tall. And um, then we would go back to my grandparents' house where we, you know, played kind of those old fashioned games and uh, spent time playing cards and doing those sorts of things. And I have to say, one of the other things about growing up in Canarsie is. Even though many people ended up becoming quite successful, I don't ever remember a discussion about how much money anybody had. So you had friends who lived in the housing projects on either side of Canarsie. You had friends who lived on your street. And you had friends who, I didn't know that they didn't have money. But it was never a topic of conversation. There wasn't competitiveness about who drove what kind of car or who dressed in what. There were maybe a couple of incidents where people bragged about things, but in general, there was a sense of real economic equality that was really very, very different than what I experienced even raising my own children in Connecticut. Um, so I think that was, you know, provided a real sense of values because you worked hard for intrinsic reasons, not because you wanted to get a better, you know, materialistic object. It was really about being a better, you know, for your own, own self-worth. Um, so that was one thing I loved. I also loved, as I said, being able to walk to school. And my teachers at PS279, starting in kindergarten, Miss Romaine was my kindergarten teacher, and I adored her. In fact, I remember that she had she was so gentle and kind, and she, there was once a girl who, I, looking back now, I realized came from, I realize now, came from a, a home where, I don't know if her parents spoke English, and she came in with hair that was very knotted, and Mr. Romaine took her in the corner and very gently combed her hair for her. And I never forgot Miss Romaine's hands. They were the gentlest, um, gentlest hands I'd ever seen. And I remember that, that year saving up money to get Jergens lotion from my mom because Miss Romaine always kept Jergens lotion in the corner to make her hands nice and soft. And it wasn't until I was much older that I realized that she was the first African American teacher I'd ever had. In fact, she was biracial. I didn't even know that because it was something that just wasn't thought about. It was just that she was this wonderful teacher and and then I went on to have some other wonderful teachers as well. But Miss Romaine always stands out for me. She sort of launched me. Um, and then I also had some religious education. I went to learn Yiddish at the Workman's Circle, which is on Seaview Avenue, 
which was an interesting organization that my great-grandparents were part of, an original chapter in East New York where my mother grew up. And again, those were very, very happy memories. And, and I said, playing in the street in the summer, it was, you, you didn't go in until, until the street lights went dark. And that's when you went inside. H-E-S. Ah, and I did go to the H-E-S in its early, uh, when it was built. My mother signed me up for ballet and for art classes, puppet making. I still remember going there for all kinds of things. And um, I remember they had a swimming pool, which was astonishing to me since I didn't swim. Um, but it was another really great institution that my father still goes to to this day as a senior, you know, it's a senior center now. So I'm very proud of my upbringing here. And I'm really actually very proud of Canarsie because it's continued to be a real safe haven for my parents. My dad is 93, my mom is almost 90 years old, and they have the most extraordinarily wonderful neighbors who um, are the next wave of immigrants and children of immigrants, and they make it an extraordinary place that my, I feel safe being in Connecticut and knowing that my neighbor, my dad's neighbors will come knocking on his door if they haven't seen him in a while and say, Seymour, are you okay? Is everything all right with your wife? Can I get you anything? Can I drive you somewhere since I know you don't have your car? So I'm still very proud of Canarsie. What? What's the name of the film? Hey, you from Canarsie. <laughs> and I'm from Canarsie. Seymour, where are you from? I'm from Canarsie. <laughs> and even when I lived in East Flatbush, we had no library. So even at like 10 years old, I'd walk all the way from Avenue B and Remsen Avenue to the library that was in like a store, was on Glenwood, uh, right, right about a block from the, uh, from the station. And, and I'd take as many books out as I could uh, carry. And I used to feel a little, a little, a little nerve wracking walking into Canarsie because it had this reputation. <laughs> Of, you know, especially, especially if they thought you were Jewish. In those days. In those days. I thought of another thing about the libraries you reminded me. Another really extraordinary gem in, in Canarsie were the public libraries. I remember going uh, during the summers, because I didn't go to summer camp, day camp, nor um, sleepaway camp, I would take my 10 cents and I would go to the library because I knew I would get my library books at the Rockway Parkway Library and then I would go to the bagel store. And that bagel store, to this day, I just remember spending, it was a dime, maybe even I, who knows, maybe I even got some change, but I would get my bagel and I'd have my stack of books and I went home really happily and I ended up volunteering there when I was older and my brother ended up working at the, the library on Seaview Avenue. Oh, and, and our block, one of the Grabsteins lived on our block, so um, we were, we had a legendary street on 99th Street because anything to do with the Grabsteins, which was a place I went to with my grandmother all the time. You, you, is it, did you stop it? <laughs>